Isn't it a beautiful day to worship the Lord today in this November season? You look at the side of me and think it's all nice and warm out there, but actually it's chilly and getting ready for snow, which is good too, right? And uh, I'm not for forecasting snow, I'm not a forecaster, but I always am excited when we find snow. If you have your um, Bibles, turn to the book of Galatians and continue um, the topic of um, agape love, God's kind of love. Everyone knows that love is the answer. They still know what love is. And God loves you. Great message. Not for what he can get in return. He's not manipulating you. Not using kindness like a, a someone who's selling you something. And as soon as you say you don't want to buy it, they're going to be angry at you or something like that. No, God loves you because of his very nature. He created you. He designed you. The things that might annoy you about yourself and other people annoys them about you. God loves you. God loves that aspect of you. He made you with your exact uh, DNA and, and your personality and your sense of humor. My sense of humor that no one gets but me, but I enjoy thoroughly. And, uh, whatever aspects of you, God designed you. And then Jesus Christ gave his life on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins so that when we're broken and we make mistakes, then we can start over and just be enveloped in that grace that we're to be here in that unmerited love and to be able to dream again and to have our lives put back together again. God loves you. What a risky, risky endeavor. And so when Jesus, when Stephen, the uh, disciple of uh, the disciples, the deacon, when he was telling about God's love and they were throwing rocks at him until he died and he looked, had the face of an angel, and he forgave them. And that was a revolution of love. When Jesus was spat upon, when he was whipped, when he was cursed, when he was beaten up, he forgave them from the cross. What risky love. It's my prayer that every marriage can have that kind of risk to be able to love. We're so protective when it comes to love because we were designed to love. We're at our very best when we're loving. But we're hurt most whenever we try to love and it's returned with something less than love, something that strikes back at, it, at you. Last week as we continued this series on love, we looked at 1 Corinthians 13 where it's telling us what love is not because so many people are confused about love. And, and then we looked at 1 Corinthians chapter 9 where it talks about planting seeds of love. What a risk to plant seeds of love. And actually financially giving and supporting and and helping this community. I'm proud of everything that everyone does for every organization, but actually how the local church works. I think it's one of the greatest organizations to impact the world is the local church. And a mother told me about uh, her daughter that was has been saving her money, and uh, she has three jars in her home. One jar is for savings, for all the money that she earns. And she earns a lot of money. If you've ever seen her, she'll come up and ask me for a dollar. So she's making a lot of money. She has savings. Uh, she has money to spend. And then she has money to tithe. And her jar was really getting full. And her mom, not knowing what was being preached on last week, said, are you going to do something with that tithe that you give to God? And she said, you know what? I'm going to take it to my Sunday school class. And I'm going to give it to my Sunday school teacher. And I'm going to tell her that I want to help the homeless people. It's getting cold out. I know this church has a ministry to the homeless people. I want to help the homeless people. This is a little tiny girl. And so she wrote a note. This goes to the homeless. <laughs> and her mom said, I was, she expressed to me this way. When I saw my little girl carrying her jar down to the surgical class before the sermon, I was just full of tears. What? I know that's up. What an amazing thing God's doing in her heart. And after the service, she went back to her, and she was carrying the jar of money back with her. <laughs> and the mom said, what happened? I thought you were going to give the money to the homeless. And she said, I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Did the mom love her any less? No. Moms have to love their children. It's just part of their nature. And God loves us. And we tell people that they can Never give it. 50 years, you're not going to sin. If you pray for us, we're thankful for that. But the church will exist. Provide for the pastors that call on the people. They have a place that's used seven days a week. 
for all kinds of groups and people that are getting off of addictions and everything else because God stirs heroically in some people who become the local church. They plant seeds of faith. Well, the Bible says, it describes this kind of love, 1 Corinthians 13. We have the love chapter challenge. You guys remember the love chapter challenge on the back of your handout? If you don't have your handout, you might want to pull it out. The first one is that if you're married, you need to give your wife a smack every day. That's if you're the husband, give your wife a smack every day. If you're the wife, give your husband a smack every day. And I'm talking a good, juicy smack, one with germs and, <laughs> and all kinds of things. And if you're not married, if you're single, just grab someone and give them a smack. No, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> give people hugs appropriately. I'm from a non-hugging family, and there's four boys. The only way we would show affection was by lowering our heads and running full blast into each other. I mean, it was far from a hugging family. When someone corners me and gives me a hug, it feels good. It feels like it's good for my health. So you single people that, think about it, every day you found someone to appropriately give a hug and to encourage them with love. And then there's the other things that spell love. Love is patient, that's what we're memorizing. Love is kind. How rare that is. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It's not rude. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. And it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Boy, if we could all memorize that and pray that every day, just for 30 days, with the love chapter challenge. Well, we're moving on to the scripture, studying agape, the scripture, God's kind of love. There's four kinds of love in the Greek, there's agape love, which is God's kinds of love. There's storge love, which is love in a family. God's not against that. There's eros, which is the erotic love that holds a, a husband and wife together. And, and God's not against that either, to some people's surprise. There's filio, which is brotherly love. We have Philadelphia, which is built on that principle. And nothing great really happens without the brotherly and sisterly kind of love. But it's so astounding that it breaks off this concept of God's kind of love. Something that needed to be defined, it needed to be defined new. And, and so in 1 Corinthians 13, it tells us all the things it's not, because people get confused about it. Well, in Galatians chapter 5, we see that, see that love takes risks. If you want to play it safe, you're never going to fall in love. You're going to be very, very vulnerable when you dare to love. It says in Galatians 5, 6, it says the only thing that counts, it hardly even sounds religious, does it? The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. What faith it is when someone commits their life to Jesus Christ not knowing what they're going to ask of him. What faith it is when someone gets baptized Especially in this kind of weather. <laughs> Actually, we have a warm pool. My grandson Elijah's getting baptized Tuesday. We're so excited about that. Jackie went to pick him up at the airport. But faith it is for someone to be baptized and say, I'm going to be a Christian my whole life. What faith it is for someone to pledge their lives to each other. Say they're going to love each other in sickness and health. What faith it is after someone's gone through a divorce to dare to love again after you've been hurt that much, to dare to be vulnerable, to share your weaknesses and your hurts. That first time to say, I think I love you. Remember the monkeys made that into a song? It's a really good line. Partridge family. Partridge family. Okay, that wasn't the I'm feeling my sister's <laughs> and you will say, I think I love you. In one of the movies that I, I hate the most, The Notebook, 
I, I, I really don't like it because uh, I wrote a book, it, it, uh, I, I sold it to an editor, a publisher, and they turned it into a romance. And I'm so embarrassed when I had to go to my hometown and see all the guys that I played football with look at my book in the war section or the sports section. They found it in the romance section. They still teased me. And then someone reviewed it and uh, back east and they compared me to Nicholas Sparks in the notebook. And it was like su such an insult. And, uh, but to tell the truth, I actually went to that romantic movie, The Notebook. And I was the only man in the theater. So the wife talked me into it. Did you guys get find yourself in that situation? And everyone, the whole theater was just crying. And I was like, their, their, their chests were just heaving at the romance that was taking place. And, and Jackie kept looking over at me like, are you crying? Are you crying? And I'm like, keep those eyes dry. All mankind depends upon it. <laughs> and I would take a break and, and go watch a war movie for a little while, then come back. But somewhere in that movie it says, the best love is the kind that awakens the soul, that makes us reach for more, that plants the fire in our hearts and brings space to our minds. Real living is real loving. When you look at your life and you look at your accomplishments, it's not going to be the degrees that you've earned. It's not going to be the amount of money that you've earned or the buildings that you built, or the honors that you received, it's going to be the moments of love that you experience. Like at this Thanksgiving, when you have someone there to love and to try to appreciate how much you love them. It was batting a thousand when we built the church. Jackie, I, when I moved here to start, I tried to build the greatest caring net. I say try. The greatest caring net we will ever see. I was 29, Jackie was 28. Boy, it seemed like everything that happened was just incredible, how God blessed us. Then we tried to build a recreation center, and who knew how much it was going to cost? The Red Name, it always be the Red Name Rod Recreation Center to me. We did it because there was a girl who committed suicide, and her dad lived and worked in New York, went back and forth, and she was deeply depressed. She was in her youth group, and there were more suicides here on this side of this lake than on the other side. There was a huge drug addiction problem, so we thought we needed a recreation center. We committed ourselves to it. And it was more than what we thought we could pull off. God still worked for our good. I had to stand here and say, I take responsibility for that. I am the leader of this organization. I haven't always batted a thousand. And you know what? In all of that, you could have crucified me. Maybe some of you did. But many of you get people that are here. The church goes on. And it'll go on till the end of this world. As long as I live, I'll be fulfilling the promises that I have. And we'll use that building. And we'll use whatever buildings we have. Because the church is more than buildings. The church is love. What an intangible quality. It's risky love. It's daring to try it because it's the right thing to do. When we tried to build a project down in the Tegucigalpa city dock, and what a risky endeavor that was. It's risky to love. You put your life in, in a, the most vulnerable position that you possibly can. So the only thing that counts is faith that expresses itself through love. Martin Luther said that when he said, you know, you should be so religious, you have all the religious trappings, but unless you're, you're saved by grace, through faith, it doesn't work. Now faith is this, if it's the size of a mustard seed, it can move a mountain. Faith doesn't mean you have all the answers, it means you've got a little bit of answers, it's going to change your life. So when you have faith in something, it, it's so amazing. When you trust them, and you allow them to do something. I can remember when Jackie and I would let her leave, her, leave town and we'd leave our kids as teenagers to be at home and to run our house. What a risky endeavor that was. <laughs> but we lived in Rose Hill, where we knew all the parents. And the word we'd get around, there's a party at the White House. <laughs> 
it's like we've had answers that are, are flown enough, you know, that are, hey, have you guys heard there's a party at the White House? So we'd sit down with all our kids and say, you know, we heard there's a party at the White House. And they'd say, that must be the White House in Washington, D.C. That could be here. <laughs> now, when you raise kids, you risk, right? You risk them falling down, but you can't give up. You risk them trying. They don't, when they decide what they're going to be, what they're going to do with their life, they don't know how permanent that's going to be. It's going to change several times. They don't know if they're going to make mistakes, but love is risky. It overcomes the mistakes that we make, the sins that we commit. We invest in such a bold way to dare to love someone. So when you just walk across the room to a homeless person and you say, Hi, I'm Tim White. They'll say, Hi, I'm Tim White, you're not Tim White. But I am. <laughs> What's your name? What's your story? And you laugh, you tell them your story too. You're risking to have a friendship. Every time that Jack and I sign a letter, your friend for the rest of our lives. We're not saying you have to be our friend. You can criticize us all you want. You can quit and say we stink. You're probably right. You can say you disagree with this. We're saying, guess what? We're going to pray for you. We're going to love you. Even when we disagree. When you love someone, you can't help but love them even more. Because the love is flowing. It's agape love. It's flowing from God. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Now let me give you a little historical perspective. This is because I don't like history. But most of us thought that the, the communist empire, the Iron Curtain, would never fall, right? In our lifetime or in many generations. But uh, it did. It changed. It was transformed. And part of it was this quest for this love to take place that was more than just scientific or empty. And so when Gorbachev invited Dr. Rob Schur to speak at Christmas Eve on their only state-run television station, and it was one of the top shows ever watched, and he just told the Christmas story. Then they invited Billy Graham to come and speak, but they said, we're not going to advertise for where you're speaking, but people would show up by the thousands. Before you even speak, they would come forward to commit their lives to Jesus Christ. All the social scientists got together in Czechoslovakia, and they had a conference on Marxism that said, how do we deal with this thing of faith? I know that I knew the president of the uh, Russian Orthodox Church, and they said the state was trying to keep the church back. You could only have so many people. They weren't already a member of a church. They couldn't become a member of a church. So they got the top thinkers together. And you can Google this and read the books about it. They said, how can we survive in the people's need for faith? And they called it God with a face on it. Because it didn't work just to have a principle of an unmoved mover or some scientific principle. And there was just a desire for a personal relationship with love, with Jesus Christ. That's what caused our world to change as much as it has. How responsible we've been to that is another question. But love takes risks. Love changes people. Love is an investment. It's a gamble. You're betting it all. And yeah, you might have bricks and stones thrown at you. And they break your bones. And they hurt you, too. <laughs> and you might have enemies. And you might have to stand and say, you know what? I failed there. Forgive me. I did the best that I could. <coughs> and without grace, love has no net. But with grace, love has a net. And it catches us. And somewhere there's someone that's full of grace that's trying to keep going again. Let's start over again. We're not giving up. And that's why this church has been the last day in the world. Because on Tuesday I'm baptizing Elijah Ray Diaz, or Tumateo Diaz, with little kids like that. Who would bet against them? We could change the world. Little kids like this baby right over here. They're just soaking up the love. That's the way I was raised. My mom, she held me. I heard sermons before I ever wanted to hear a sermon. And my youngest brother, when he went away to college, he was like, I can't sleep with so much stress. 
starting in his ESPN game of the week, quarterback, starting in Steve Young, because I can't sleep. You know, I wonder what happened if I called Dad and asked him to preach a sermon so I could sleep. Instead <laughs> 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 so of his little baby, he heard sermons. He said next to the people, they respected him. Full of love. Love takes risks. Are you ready to risk? All that thing counts is love. Is faith expressing itself in love. Then in the fifth chapter we see that it teaches us that um, while being filled with the Spirit and what it means, and this is what it says. Actually, before that I want to touch on this. How is that people stop loving? It's the natural way to love. It's because we learn a dysfunctional concept that was called being controlled and manipulative. The Apostle Paul says to the church in Galatia, he says, you were loving. What happened to you? Who cut in on you? If you ever raise kids, it's like almost all kids are loving. It's, it's instinctive for us to love. But as they grow up, they, they hit about junior high age or maybe it's fifth grade, and they start being a little bit cynical. Maybe they see the errors of their parents and the errors of some adults, and they kind of get that edge to them. Uh, who knows what it is? Maybe it's the Disney Channel. Who knows? <laughs> but they lose some of that innocence. And I can't tell you how many times how wonderful it is, thank God for the youth leaders that are here today, when a young person will come back and their parents won't even know that they committed their life to Jesus Christ and say, it's like I've got my child back again. They've got that innocence. They told me they're going to have lunch by the kids that have no one to sit by at lunch. They told me they're going to stand up against the bullies. They've got that sparkle back again. They've got that innocence. Because it comes from God. How do you get dysfunctional love? Someone cuts in on you. Because lack of faith is contagious. It's like the flu is contagious. It always gets right after Thanksgiving. I don't know why. And probably that second helping of uh, pumpkin pie that does it. I don't know. And it just sweeps through and hits everyone. Apostle Paul says, you were running a good race. You were full of love. And everyone cut in on you. And we never got to see what God could have done with your life. Full of innocent, idealistic love. You became bitter. You became self-preoccupied. You began to point fingers at other people. What happened? Someone cut in on you. And he goes, they're going to get their penalty. But that will happen in the church. That will happen all around. Someone will come on and say, you aren't like Josh. He stepped on my toe. <laughs> it hurt me. And you'll know, you know, think as you're hearing one side of the story is, boy, Josh has just got to stop going around stepping on everyone's toes. He's got big feet. <laughs> and then you lose the innocence of your faith because you have something against another person. A mistake that they made. Not realizing that we all make mistakes. We all need God's grace. The Apostle Paul says, don't have a healthy faith. Don't let anyone cut in on you. If you go away to college, they'll say, you know what? Christianity doesn't know everything. We don't know everything. That should be no surprise to you. If it did, we would be a cult. We worship the God that knows everything. We've got a lot to learn. But someone can come up with an agenda, they can cut in on you. You can lose your, your inspiration, your, your, your ability to be naive, the ability to be trusting, the ability to be up, the ability to keep searching because someone cut in on you. Then thirdly, keep healthy faith by your relationship with Jesus Christ. When they saw how the Holy Spirit was working, and it says the spirit, that fruit of the Spirit is this, in Galatians 5.22, this is another good one to memorize, it says, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. In other words, you don't have perfect love because you've got this list of what Pastor Tim or Pastor David said in the sermon or in the single seminar. You went to divorce recovery and someone comes up to you and they step on your toe. Or someone comes up to you and they back into you or they scream at you or, or something goes wrong and you're like... Okay, what to do when someone steps on my toe after they backed into me and they pulled my hair and they slap me? Uh, do this. No, it's not a law that we love. We love because Christ's love is constantly poured into our lives. 
We receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, when the revolution was first taking place, they'd go out and see people, and they'd say, we'll pay you for that Holy Spirit. We see all the miracles taking place through the power of love. They're thinking, man, this would be a great act that Circus Olay is the miracle because of the power of love. And the disciples said, you can't pay us for this. You have to experience it. You have to make Christ Lord of your life. Then you'll be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Then you'll be full of the Holy Spirit. You'll have love and joy and peace and patience and gentleness and kindness and self-control. You can't go to church enough for this. You can't do enough deeds for this. No, you have love because it's a relationship with God. You put Him as important in your life. And that kind of love is joy, peace, and patience and gentleness and kindness and self-control. And that's why we can pray for people. I hope that's another challenge. I hope you pray for people on a regular basis that you'd never pray for. We had we moved back into our house. We had all the people that helped us move back into our house. We, nice people like the Gibsons and the Pones and a lot of people over for dinner. Everyone had a bad back after helping us. <laughs> and we had a great dinner. The next day we had one for our neighbor because God's been reaching our neighborhood. They're all from different religions. And we've got this really amazing couple there. They've just shattered every idea I have about Buddhists. They're just some of the, the neatest people. They're from Tibet. They were chased out by the communists. They moved to Germany. Then they moved here. They're very successful in their business. And they love, they have a great sense of humor. And they decided to sell their house and buy, or actually rent their house and then buy it up. They're making money by in real estate. But they're moving from our neighborhood. And so Jackie said, uh, we might have a prayer for this couple because we love them so much. Can we have this prayer? So out of the blue, she said this. So we bowed their heads. And she said, you know, we love this couple. They brought so much joy and fun to our neighborhood. I mean, they, we spent more time hanging out with them than anyone else in our neighborhood. When I, so help, they always come over and help first. So the young couple. And she said, God, we ask that you just bless them wherever they go, that this friendship lasts for the rest of our lives. And she said just the sweetest words, and she said, and we pray it in the sweet name of Jesus. Amen. Now, she didn't mean to say we pray it in the sweet name of Jesus. She thought she made a really big mistake. She was like, no, I said it. I didn't mean to say it because we've got Muslim, Buddhists, and all these backgrounds here. And afterwards, she said, I feel so embarrassed that I, I prayed in the name of Jesus in front of all these other people. I said, pray a blessing for them. I said, Jackie, don't be embarrassed. They were all smiling, and their eyes were twinkling. They were just enjoying the blessing. And Jackie said, you had your eyes open in Virginia. And then I was busted. <laughs> <laughs> because I did. And they were. Because love transcends religion. Love transcends all the things that we bind other people down for enforcement and something. Love is from God. It shows us that we're all neighbors. That war and genocide and torture and all the other things and cheating other people and all the things that take place in this world are really pretty dumb when it comes to God's love. <coughs> so would you join with me the revolution of God's love, the love chapter challenge? It's right there before you. Stand up here for the closing message. Now, in the hymn was able to keep you and make you strong, to do far more than you could ever ask or imagine. God, we ask that we can be better at loving in your way. It's the only thing that counts. That it would be contagious in our lives, more contagious than negativity or the flu or anything else. That we would love, we would risk with no expectation of return. We love just because of your love in us. Thank you for doing that already for these wonderful people that are here this morning. Help us to leave here excited to be a part of your love revolution. In Jesus' name, amen.